On today's episode of Project Mullet Mustang presented by Turn 14, it's time to make this big old hunk of Detroit iron turn some corners with Eibach coilovers and sway bars and these big sexy Anki wheels and Kumo tires. We got the mullet Mustang uh, twerking here a bit. Booty's up in the air. PT's about to work that ass. What are you doing back here, buddy? I think I'm gonna replace the suspension first and a sway bar. All right. Does that sound good to you? It does sound good to me. But wait, people, before I start, we're gonna actually have Moose make a cameo here today. That's right, we got a special guest star. He's way over there. It's a giant Mr. Moose, everybody. So our first item up to do here is to remove the old rear sway bar. Then we remove the shock. And according to the instructions, we can lower the rear axle and slide the springs out. And so far, Moose, what do you think? It looks like it's going to be pretty simple. Uh, yeah, I say so. Simple as it gets anyways. Yeah, we got three bolts on each side holding the sway bar in place. An end link. And this over here, once we get that off, should be able to slide it out. Oh. Bada boom. Bada boom. Bada bing. Almost hit me in the face, but I'm kind of used to that now. <laughs> Parts falling on me. Keep going. Well. Oh. That is one easy way to remove a shock. All right, it's time for PT to gun this uh, top nut off here and drop out that worn out old shock. Oh, the nut rolled away. All right, let's see if I can pull this out here, DP. All right, guys, we're trying to drop the springs out with the axle, and as you can see here, we had to remove a bracket that holds the brake line on. So Moose, do we have enough clearance here to slide this spring out? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Looks like it. Yeah. Yeah. I just gotta pry the spring off the yeah, rubber. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's okay. So That's a good sign though. Yep, yeah, I think me and dude, I just gotta reposition myself. Oh wow, look at that. Our spring is out. That's the nice thing about solid axle is that there it floats a lot, so we have the traditional uh Independent, you gotta kind of play yeah, against know, the bushings. Right? You gotta fight the bushings. Yeah, not here. We'll take it. Our factory bump stop is right there. We just removed it. And now Moose has, Moose has the beautiful task of installing the Eibach one. So that means uh, you gotta tear it apart there, Moose. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Pop the new one in. And uh, let's see. Brute force and ignorance, my friend. Yeah, that worked well, didn't it? While Moose is back there fighting with the bump stops, I'll give you a little spiel on our Eibach R1 setup for the rear of the Mustang. As you can see, this is an inverted setup, so the piston moves up and down from the bottom of the shock rather than the other way around. These are, they're R1s, which mean they're single adjustable for uh, rebound and compression. There's actually a little adjuster in here. You can see the plus minus, and they have a tool that you put in there to stiffen or, or soften them. Um, they come with a dual spring setup, which is, uh, really for two purposes. This is just a helper spring. It doesn't have any spring rate. So all it's really there to do is to take up any space when the wheel goes into full droop. It doesn't allow the, the spring to rattle around. Obviously this collar up here gives you your height adjustability. You can lower the car between half an inch and two and a half inches in the rear. So these are designed as an autocross and track day setup. But as we discovered on our S2000 with the R2s, they actually ride extremely well on the street. So we're pretty optimistic that these are not only going to improve the ride quality, but they're going to give us much better body motion control at the track. Speaking of which, we also have sway bars. So the, uh, the rear sway bar is a solid bar, 22 mil diameter. It's quite a bit bigger than the stock bar, which just looking at it, I'm guessing is about 15 mil. And it's also uh, three, it is a three position adjustability here. So you can go from you know, least stiff to softer 
to the uh, crazy oversteer do not drive in the rain exactly this is like your drift setup and this is your uh, I actually don't want to die setup here um, and it comes with really nice hardware that's what impressed me the most yeah look at these uh, billet end lengths they're beautiful and uh, they all have like nice poly bushings in them and even these brackets that hold the bar to the chassis are super sexy so props to Eibach on all that hardware the rear end of this thing is about to look a whole bunch better and a little bit redder too. So we got a fish up here. There we go. This is the uh, mushroom top that goes. The <laughs> mushroom top. <laughs> of course. I'm using technical terms yes, here. Yes, that is a technical term. So that's the uh, top of the rubber isolator for <laughs> the spring. It's the Mexican party hat. Maybe. And that goes on like that. I think, I'm not really sure exactly what the proper way to install this first is, but... Jam it in the hole. That's just, yeah, we're gonna go like that. That's the proper method. Now, you put the adjustable collar on. And would you look at that, guys? We have ourselves adjustable springs in the rear. Oh yeah. Very pro. You might even call it multi-pro. Ooh, now you're coming in. That's a zinger. Don't be shocked, everyone. There's a shocking event about to happen while Pete installs the rear shock. What, what, what do you mean? I, I just don't get it. Are you shocked by this turn of events? I'm not, but I'm uh, shockingly surprised how <laughs> simple this install is going to be. <laughs> it is shockingly simple, isn't it? Look at that. My goodness. But that I, I will there. give you a uh, not-so-pro tip. When you're putting your lower mount on, make sure that your adjustment is placed to the outside because if you have this rotated in, you're not gonna be able to get at it. Good point. Ah. We should also mention that uh, we, we pre-adjusted the ride height on the lower spring perch there to the recommended specs and the instructions. You most certainly did. So, one bolt on the bottom and then... Uh, Let's go to the top. PT can jump in the trunk. What is going on back here? Moose and PT in one shot? Well, wow, yeah. Over on the other side, Moose just finished up uh, putting in the bump stop. And I just watched him Moose spec the bolts here. And <laughs> we had a problem getting them out. So I predict if I ever have to remove this in the future, it's going to be the same problem getting them out again because uh, of that massive torque spec that he's got going on. Moose's natural torque spec is, I believe, 240 foot-pounds. <laughs> Give, Give or, or take. take. <laughs> Is this t-shirt foreshadowing things to come on the, the mullet Mustang build, buddy? Not at all. <laughs> no way. I'm all about that naturally aspirated V8 life. Come on. Those big lumpy cans? Yeah, exactly. You want some of that in your life? No, what I want is a hoist in my life. Yeah, God, I know, huh? All right. So now we raise the rear end here. A lot of heavy thinking on it going on around here. Moose is reading instructions. Peter's looking at fasteners and Loctite. So we're lubing up the uh, bushings, obviously, so they don't this squeak. This key, yeah. So this little aluminum piece here closes off one end of the end link. And it needs to be Loctited on there, I would say. So as you can see, there's sort of a, well, you can see it all happening right before your eyes. Oh yeah, look at that. The beauty of moving pictures. Look at this sway bar end link. My goodness. Fancy. Or I should call this a, a mount, not an end link. I'd call it a masterpiece. Cool. On to side number two. Ready to bolt this thing up momentarily. And this time I'm going to put it on in the right spot. Yeah. Because last time I installed it in the middle, and now we've got lube yes. all up on the sway bar. Oh, yeah. Look at that greasy pipe, eh, right, PT? I think it's a, mar a marine grade grease pretty much, isn't it? Like Almost certainly. Heavy duty stuff. Yeah. It's meant to not wash away with water. Yep. It laughs in the face of water. <clears throat> Are we gonna go full soft or? Uh, uh, we go in the middle. Go in the middle? I'm not gonna go uh, crazy killer. I'm just gonna go right in the middle. Go in the middle is always a good idea with your damper settings and your bar settings. Yeah, exactly. That way it's only one step in either direction to tune her up a bit. <laughs> Look at Moose. Like he's giving birth. It's like a beached whale. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's like a dolphin struggling to breathe over here. About to snap. 
The thing is, if, <laughs> the problem is I'm using three eighths drive. I really should be using half drive. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Moose. I'm gonna go get my put it, put, put the gun on there, man. Now that Pete and Moose are done making the rear end of this Mustang much better, it's time to install our wheel and tire package. Pretty excited about these. These are Anki's GTC 01 RR wheels, which is part of their racing revolution uh, wheel lineup. These are really a top of the line wheel from Anki. They're very lightweight. We went with an 18 by nine and a half plus 35 offset and a 275 35 18 tire from Kumo. These are their uh, PS91 tires and they are, as you can see, a very aggressive ultra high performance summer tire, 260 treadwear rating. Uh, we have never tried this tire before, so it's exciting to try something new and different for us. Uh, they are um, very highly reviewed online, so I'm guessing these are going to be a massive improvement over our Pirelli all seasons. These should give us better grip on the racetrack and should really improve our ETs on the drag strip too. These are actually a lot lighter than the stock wheel and tire package. If we had a scale here, I'd weigh them, but I would say they're... I know your like max curl is 25 pounds and you were able to lift these up exactly. with ease, so I'd say they're probably around there. They're at least five pounds lighter as a whole package than the stockers. So, get my giant pumpkin head out of the way here. What we didn't do is buy new lug nuts. Rookie move. So I gotta put these skanky old chromies back on for now, but we will get us some good ones. Pro tip from some old road racers is to tape on your wheel weights. But not just any old tape, this is foil tape, metal foil tape, it, it conforms better. It does conform better and it, and it sticks seems better. to stick better than duct tape or whatever. And it doesn't age the way duct tape does, the adhesive stays on much longer. Yeah, duct tape glue really gets nasty over time, so yeah, if you're going to the track where you're going to be spinning these things up to some serious speeds, tape them on. There ain't nothing worse than having a wicked amount of uh, wheel shimmy. Yeah. Uh, down the back straight when you're, uh, if you threw a weight. Bam! Multi Pro R1s for the front. Obviously, we've installed this side already. About to do the other side. We like this uh, stainless steel shock body for our environment up here. This is ideal. It's not going to rust or corrode much at all. It's got a nice big uh, 46 mil piston shaft. And if Pete and I know anything, it's that shaft diameter matters. It certainly does. It's got uh, these nice top hats with spherical bearings in here. So no binding action up there. You've got your usual slotted uh, camber adjuster down here. Looks to be a 350 foot pound spring with a keeper up here so you don't get any spring rattle and droop. All that said, we also got a front bar to put on. So I think I'm gonna hand this off to the big boys and watch them do some work. We've got yet another super easy removal here. Four bolts up top on the strut assembly. Now we come below here and we've got two big bolts holding the strut to the hub and one small bolt that holds the ABS and brake line and this thing comes right out. So I'm thinking Moose, you can get this done in five minutes. Moose? Why isn't Pete working on it? Well, because Moose has got to do some work. He's here. Put the big sweaty beast to work. Yo. Let's pop right. those bad boys out. I forgot how loud air tools are. Yeah, I know, we're, we've been spoiled like cordless. Can you do the reach around or should I do the bolts when you uh, pop her in? Uh, you can Did you just bolts. offer to get Pete a reach around? Damn straight. Maybe I would accept that on another <laughs> day, but today we're in a hurry, so. You seen those hands, Pete? Look at those things. Yeah. They're like farmer's mitts. We got the Multi Pro R1 going in here. That's right. This is on the other side. Oh, my first try, look at that. That's because I was guiding break. you in, my friend. No, no, don't Oh, break. yeah. <laughs> you never have a chance I'm pretty good at hands. getting it in on the first try. You're just that good, eh, buddy? No, I don't think so, my friend. <laughs> you had some help. All right, well, that was not difficult. All right, PT, slap that big red bar in there. And man, is this one easy, too. Four bolts hold this up. We've already mounted our end links. So this is a whole five minute job, if that. There are sway bars out there that need subframes lowered to get in and out, but this guy, not so much. It's gonna be perfect. You got it, Moose? 
so much teamwork going on under here. We are all eyeballed up on the front end now. Sway bar in. R1 coilovers in. It's almost time to throw this thing on the ground. All right, we are so close to being done here. I'm gonna put the wheel on, but before I do that, I just wanna mention these Enkis have a rather flat center cap and the center of the hub here was popping them out. So naturally, we're just gonna remove that. I know there may be a little bit of dirt that gets into ah. there on that nut, but yeah. we yeah. don't wanna drive this car anymore anyway, so it's not a big deal. Let's mount this wheel up here and check this out. It's got two valve stems. Do you know why there are two valve stems? Because if you're a baller, a race car baller, and you wanna pump your tires up with nitrogen, you, to fully purge the system, you would bleed it out on this side, let nitrogen in here, and then close this off, and bam, it's all full of nitrogen. And why do we run nitrogen? Because it doesn't get affected by air temperature as much as oxygen does. That's right, it doesn't expand as much, so you don't get as much of a PSI creep. And we got enough creepers around here already, we don't want any PSI creep That's happening. That's right. right? That is Speaking of which, there's the biggest creeper on. of them all over there. Well, that's a wrap for this episode. We'll call it job done for now, and I think you'll agree it looks pretty damn sexy. I am thoroughly impressed with the look of this car now. It's gone from being a uh, POS Mustang, in my opinion, to <laughs> wow. something that looks like a, a decent track car. It looks like it's getting there. We still have lots of work to do. i got to fix the front alignment. I'm going to fiddle a bit with the ride height to get it just right. Yeah. And then next episode, we head to the racetrack. The track is next. We're gonna do a bit of drag racing and we'll see what all these mods improve on our lap time. Feel the burn, PT. God, that 10 Three more. pounds. Two more. Uh, one last one. Oh, jeez, oh, feel that burn. Gotta do the negative on the way down oh, too, bro. Gotta get that You're gonna have to get burn. those supplements in you right after That's this. Right. Need some creatine action around here, bro.